Hello and welcome to Santa Fe Nursing Labs. My name is Professor Sandra Milner. In this video, we're gonna demonstrate how to flush both a peripheral IV and a central line. An IV line is flushed before administration of medication and at the end of medication administration. IV lines that are not in use are typically flushed once per shift to ensure patency, but you wanna follow your hospital policy. In this video, we will demonstrate how to flush both a peripheral line and a central line. At Santa Fe Nursing Labs, we use an acronym called SASH, which stands for saline, administer, saline, and then heparin. These are general guidelines that are used for flushing any type of IV line, either a peripheral or central line. I'm gonna start by demonstrating how to flush a peripheral IV line. I have gathered my needed supplies. I have my first saline, I then have my medication to administer. I then have my second saline. Because this is a peripheral IV, I do not need heparin. I have my Curos caps, a new one, and then I have my alcohol swabs to scrub the needleless connector. When administering medications to patients, you always wanna make sure you follow the eight rights of medication administration. The first right is the right patient, right drug, right dose, right time, right route, right reason, right documentation, and right response. I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna put on my gloves. I have checked my medication. I have explained to my patient what I am doing. I'm following all my eight rights of medication administration. I do not see any redness or signs of infiltration. So I'm gonna remove my old Kiro cap. That can be discarded in the trash. Before I clean the port, I'm gonna make sure I do not have any air in my first saline. Double check my med is good. Make sure my second saline looks good. Okay. My IV is clamped at the moment. I'm gonna scrub the hub for 15 seconds. It is important to have a watch with the second hand when administering IV push medications. I use my first saline. I'm gonna unclamp my line and flush with the first five mLs. Observe the IV side, I do not see any redness or irritation doing a slow push because peripheral IV is in a smaller vessel. Without touching the end of the needleless cannula, I'm gonna switch my syringes and I will now administer my medication at the recommended rate. I'm giving one ml over one minute. You do need to watch with a second hand I'll remove my medication syringe. I then need to flush the medication through the rest of the IV. The first ml of this flush needs to be given at the same rate as my medication. So I just flushed um, one ml over one minute. So this first ml needs to go over one minute. The rest of the five mls can go at any rate. I'm using a slow push with the peripheral IV in order to avoid damaging the smaller vessels. As I'm flushing in the remaining one ml, I need to clamp my line to provide positive pressure because this is a negative displacement valve. I will then replace with a new Kuros cap. So next I am going to demonstrate how to flush and administer a medication through a central line. I have gathered all of my supplies. We have our first saline flush. We then have our medication. We have a second saline flush and our heparin syringe. We have Kiro caps to replace and alcohol swabs. I'm now going to go ahead and wash my hands. 
I have explained to my patient what medication I have for them. I have double checked my drug guide, so I'm following all of my eight rights of medication administration. I'm gonna check to make sure each of my syringes does not have air in them, do not have any air bubbles. My medication is still the correct amount. My second saline. And then my heparin. You will either be flushing with 100 units to 1 ml of heparin or 10 units to 1 ml. Um, it's very important to know which type of heparin that you, you need to use. The 100 units to 1 ml is typically in a yellow syringe. The 10 units to 1 ml is typically in a blue syringe. It is considered a high alert medication. As you can see, I only have 10 ml um, size syringes. It is important to use a larger 10 ml or larger syringe on a central line. If you use a smaller syringe or if you push too much force when, per, when flushing a central line, you can actually put so much pressure that you rupture the lumen and you rupture the line. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, check the site to make sure everything looks good. I don't see any redness or drainage around the site. I'm also going to pick which lumen to use to flush. This patient has a triple lumen. When you have a triple lumen, then you typically have the three ports. You'll have the um, proximal port where that lumen ends closest to you. So it's three separate lumens. Um, the, the three never mix. So you can put three different incompatible medications into each line. So the proximal one, which is closest to me, we usually use that for proximal pull. That's usually where you pull your blood from or you do your blood draws. The medial, which is the port that ends in the middle, that one medial is usually used for medications. The distal um, is the port that ends furthest on the catheter, so closest to the patient's heart. That one is usually used for diet, so that's where you typically administering your TPN. That's just a general rule. It doesn't mean that's the only port that you can use to administer TPN, pull blood, um, or administer medication. Okay, so you'll want to identify which is your proximal port, medial, and distal, since this is a triple lumen, and it's written on the actual lumen and catheter. So this says it's the proximal. This one is distal. And this next one says middle for medial. It also tells you the priming volume and the size of the catheter. So you know how much to flush. I am going to use the medial lumen. And I am then going to scrub my hub with alcohol for 15 seconds. Now that I've scrubbed the end of the needleless cannula, I do not want to touch it. I'm going to get my first saline. I am going to attach it. Before you flush a central line, you want to check for blood return. This checks for patency. If you do not get blood return, you want to follow standard protocols for clearing the line before use. I'm going to draw back my blood to make sure. And I only want to draw back into the catheter. I do not want to contaminate my whole syringe. I do get a blood return. So now I'm going to go ahead and flush my 5 mLs. For a central line, we typically use a push-pause method in order to clear the line, especially since I withdrew blood into it. I'll then administer my medication. So I'm, I am giving a push IV medication. 
If you were giving an IV medication through the line as a primary or secondary, this is the point where you would attach your IV tubing. I'm giving my one ml of medication over one minute. And then going to use my second saline to flush my medication through the line. This lumen has a priming volume of 0.6 ml, so flushing the first 1 ml over 1 minute will be appropriate to clear the line. The remaining 4 ml, I'm going to use a push-pause method just to clear the line. This type of central line does require a heparin lock of 3 ml. It is a negative pressure valve, so I do need a clamp as I am flushing the remaining 1 ml of heparin. So I clamp my line. I'm now going to replace my curer's cap, and that completes my administration. Remember, procedures for performing, scanning, and documenting your IV may vary based on the hospital. Always follow hospital policy and CDC infection control guidelines. Thank you for joining us, and remember to check out our other Santa Fe nursing videos. See you next time.